right, so welcome to Adobe Dreamweaver, everybody. Uh, this video is just, my goal is to help you kind of get the lay of the land as far as the interface goes. Uh, you may be a returning user, that's great. Uh, however, Dreamweaver has updated a little bit since, uh, you know, if you've not used it in several years here. Now, one thing, remember, with Adobe Dreamweaver is you kind of, the idea is that you have two workflows here. You can either use it strictly as an IDE where you're just coding directly in it, if you so choose. However, one of the big selling points of Dreamweaver was the what you see is what you get or WYSIWYG element to it. So what I'd like to do here before I even make any type of inner uh, documents and stuff is I just want to take you and point you to some key points and areas in the Dreamweaver interface just to get you started so you are aware of them. Now, normally, uh, whenever you're starting out with Dreamweaver, you're going to be on this home section here. As you continue to work in Dreamweaver, it will kind of start to populate, you know, previous projects, etc. But just to show you two here, I'd like to draw your attention. I'm going to use the magnifier, um, come up into the corner here. So you do have a couple of options here as far as quick starts and starter templates. This was something Dreamweaver added. Um, it is an excellent option when you might not be a web developer that you can get a web page up and running quickly. Starting out for demo's sake, though, I am going to just show you the whole create new process for simple, you know, just blank web documents here. However, I wanted to zoom in because I also want to show you along the side here, you do have kind of this quick bar here as far as different things, uh, you know, your visual queries, you know, your live views, and we'll get into all of those later. You can even come down here and customize the toolbar. Up on the top here, you have your main menu bar. The thing I always like to show folks when they're first starting out is under the edit drop down menu, all the way at the bottom, there's that preferences option. Uh, so for instance here, if uh, I'll go ahead and click on that and let's zoom out and come back to this window here. And apologize, I'm gonna zoom back in. This has a lot of items as far as, for example, you know, what do you want to have open up? Uh, some of the things you may want to tweak here is as far as, let's see here, me personally, because I do also write HTML and CSS, like web-based languages, oftentimes I'll clean up and kind of tweak my code format or hints uh, regarding these. From a designer standpoint, this really isn't as important for you. Um, likewise, too, for instance, for me, you know, the fonts, as far as the size of just the general text in the program, as you can see, both from a demoing standpoint, I do like to crank that a little bit so that I can see it easier on my screen. This is another good option here, uh, interface. Let's say, for instance, when you first started up Dreamweaver, maybe you don't like uh, the light uh, style. You want realized, oh, you know what, I want a much darker style, especially seeing, you know, my work area, I always go for, you know, the dark mode. Um, from a workflow standpoint and a designer standpoint, really this app theme here is the only area you need to worry about. Anybody who's into code elements, you may want to change as far as the display here. And then really outside of that, um, we won't get into anything else right now as far as this goes, but again, that's under edit and preferences. So those that's an area that if you need to, you can come in and kind of look at and work with there. So I'm gonna go ahead, click apply, good. And then we'll go ahead and X out. All right, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna create a new just blank document just so you can see how the interface kind of comes to life when you actually have uh, a working file. So under create new here, I'm gonna skip over quick start and templates uh, for right now. I just wanna get kind of a blank document. Also too, just as a note, whenever you're starting to make a new file for your project, you do have the starter templates here and that's what's over here as well on the left hand side when it goes to your work. So once again, I'll go ahead and zoom in here. 
Again, I am approaching these videos from a designer standpoint, not so much the HTML, CSS, you know, JSON, PHP, etc. languages. So for right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just generate a blank HTML document. Don't even worry about the code side, and I'm going to call this demo doc. That's all I'm going to do here, and we're going to go ahead and create just to make the space live and come back out. All right, so there's still several things you're going to want to be doing as far as whenever you first start into Dreamweaver. Notice uh, first thing first is you have lost some of the options on your left side toolbar here. So right now, you know, what open document you're working with, you know, file management, that's a much later topic. But just so that you can see, let's go ahead and click on Customize Toolbar. Here you can see that you can actually tweak and if you need to bring any additional elements up, you can. For right now, we will go ahead and just leave it as is. Whenever we actually get more into the designing side of websites, I'll be talking through and telling you, hey, let's go ahead and add this to our toolbar. But just know that's how you access it in the interface here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. Up on the main menu bar, I showed you under view where you had preferences. You also have the window drop down. More specifically here, this relates to additional tabbed windows that you may have in the program here. If you've ever worked with an Adobe product, this is very similar here. One thing you may not have active is the properties window. So at this point, if you want to and you're following along, click on the window drop down in your main menu bar and check for the properties window. The properties window is going to be pretty important and kind of integrated into your workflow here. Now it may actually pop up. I'll go ahead and pull mine out here. It may just pop up as a free floating bar here. It's up to you with screen real estate. Uh, because I'm an old school Dreamweaver user, I'm very used to having my property bar all the way down at the bottom. You can see I get that blue highlight at the bottom and it just snaps to the bottom. We'll get more into the bar itself in the next video whenever we actually start working with some of the web elements here. I'm also gonna zoom in here again and come up to the top so you can see. We have pretty much technically four, I'm gonna say four-ish views whenever you're working in Dreamweaver. And to access each of these views, you click on one of these three areas here. By default, uh, it's going to try and show you a split view. What the split view is, is what you're seeing right now is up in this upper portion here, I have what I would actually see if I were viewing the web page on the internet. However, at the bottom here, you see all of this code popping up here. That's if I wanted to just actually type HTML or whichever language I'm working in. So kind of leading us down this road here, you can guess if I click on the code button, I just can write code in here. This isn't an uncommon practice. Developers though, we have so many other choices in uh, IDEs as far as development environments go that I don't see too many people nowadays using Dreamweaver. I sooner see people using uh, WebStorm, um, you know, Notepad++ even, uh, those type of software packages that really aren't in the design realm. But just know that it's there, especially if you get comfortable with Dreamweaver and you're like, you know what, I'd like to chart doing, you know, code and development you have the option there. The split view allows you that when you're working, you can actually click up on the web page and I could say something like, whoops, let's say hello world and then hit enter. And you can see down on the bottom here, it automatically generated my code for me. This is a fantastic item that makes life a heck of a lot easier. I could have also, as somebody who knows web dev, I could come down here and say, I'm 
typing this in the code section. And then I'll go ahead and do a quick refresh. And you see how they kind of interchange with each other. Now we're again approaching this from the design side of things. So if anything, we're going to come to this last option in the list of three here and go to design. Notice it completely removes your code side. All we see here is the design view. This is where several of the other panels come into play. Specifically, for example, that's why I wanted folks to bring up their properties panel, but also there's things such as what we call like on the right hand side here. Let me pull the magnifier over so I can zoom in on the side here so you can kind of see a little bit better. Let me go ahead here and there we go. Can I just bring that in there a second and then I'll clean it up. But this like CSS designer tab. As you add more, as we get deeper into Dreamweaver, I'll be talking about this a lot more. You also have insert elements, so you don't have to worry about, hey, I need to know HTML. Instead, what I can do, for instance, and let me come out from the magnification here, is I could hit enter, and just from a very basic standpoint, maybe I just want to make, uh, let's say, oh, my favorite things include and I'll go ahead and make maybe an unordered list. Cats, books, doing multimedia stuff. Again, we will get into those right side panels a little bit more, but I did want to introduce you to the overall interface. One of the last items I want to talk about at this point, as far as getting started with Dreamweaver, is all the way up in the upper right hand corner here. You're going to see a box here that says standard. If you click on the drop down here, there's two layouts that you can work with. Developer, I'll go ahead and click on this. You don't have to do this if you're following along. You can see the difference as far as how it snaps everything around in the interface. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to standard again, which really for most of these videos, this is where we're going to be working. But I also like to point this out to students too, because for example, let's do this. Let's say for example, um, oh, I was working with the insert panel and I pulled it out and instead of minimizing, I accidentally hit the X. So now I'm like, Oh no, which one did I close? Well, that's where this button can kind of save you as far as in the upper right hand corner. If I just say reset standard, notice it got that bar back. The only drawback is, is yes, you do lose that property, uh, that property bar there. So I can come down here up to windows, go back down to property and reposition that. Honestly, though, this is going to be one panel as we move forward you're going to be using this panel so much you're going to become very very familiar with it so that is kind of an intro as far as your overview of the interface what you're working with uh, and so on and so forth just so you could get a feel for it